It's now time. Fernando Zhang, you have three minutes. Thank you. Chairman, we already have met for four hours today. In front of us is the $5,400 million funding application, which is premised on an unfair you know, treatment. Since the link read, we know that uh, Disney has been running at a loss. Over the years, uh, despite the losses, we still have to pay a huge amount of royalties and management fees, meaning that over the years, the people of Hong uh, the Disney is running you know, a, a business which has performed badly, and I think we need to rectify the situation. If today you say we need to respect the spirit of the contract, but for the expansion, uh, project and the application for funding application is the opportunity for us to rectify that contract. In Lechco, uh, many uh, members from the pro, uh, Democratic camp, and uh, including uh, those from the pro-government camp, like Regina Yip and Michael Tin, said that we shouldn't allow this to, to go on any further. We should ask the government to go back and negotiate for a better deal, because the conditions, the terms at the moment are too unequal. Five, $54 billion is a lot of money. I come from the welfare sector. I can tell you that to build a hostel for L, for a senior citizens for a hundred people, it costs about a hundred million. Uh, five point four billion dollars can build fifty four homes for the elderly, helping five thousand four hundred senior citizens to have a better retirement life. Last year, Chairman, more than six thousand elderly persons die in the course of waiting for a place in these homes. If the five thousand odd million dollars were spent on these homes instead, they wouldn't have waited in vain. Looking at the five thousand four hundred fifty million dollars, if they could be spent on the elderly persons so that they don't need to even be hospitalized, they can still, you know, <clears throat> you know, stay in the community. If we provide them with, for example, various, you know, uh, you know, uh, services, uh, the unit cost is one thousand nine hundred twenty-six dollars. We will be able to help the uh, senior citizens to live in the community, but we are still, and yet we are asked to inject the five thousand million dollars into this, you know, uh, bad deal. I think even for young children. There are only 730 places uh, for you know you know young children uh, to, to to receive you know uh, childcare services. Mr. Adichie, thank you. Regrettably, the uh, the motion for an adjournment was not uh, carried because that was the best opportunity. Uh, for us not to waste the two hours of our meeting time so that we can go on to the next item, which is about the AIIB. I think the chairman would agree that we should make the best use of our time. And for those, for the item which none of us want to approve anyway, even when the pro government camp want, were to approve this item, you will be queried when you, by the public. I think we should put this aside and proceed to deal with the item on the AIIB. But unfortunately, this Plan A failed because we all of us are under pressure. So we now need to go into Plan B. What is Plan B? Plan B means that if our colleagues from the pro government camp cannot, you know, you know, vote against this funding application because of pressure from the administration. And they cannot reject the. Uh, they cannot, you know, stop this motion from being continued to be discussed. Then, the most likely scenario is that I think we should be. I think we should aim for agreeing on a consensus before the next meeting, and this council can follow the procedures of the AFC. Section 21 of our ROP, Section 29 and 29 and 21, to 
you know, agree on a condition. So that even those who are most supportive of the government, even Mr. Liu Chong, Martin Liu, I'm sure I dare say that he will not object that we set a condition. If we have a consensus among ourselves, we will set a condition for this funding application. What is that condition? We can certainly discuss that. Mrs. Regime Yip's uh, con pr proposed condition is that this is the last time that this council approved funding for Disney. If they can still not turn around the business and make a profit, then the government will have to consider an opt-out option. Uh, Ms. Mr. Dr. Yu and Mr. Lam Kok Hong said that the government should, within six months, talk to Disney about how we can take back the 60 hectares of land for phase two and negotiate the management fee in, in respect of EBITDA. Uh, if you don't agree with those three conditions, you can still work out yet another condition. Mr. Nathan Law, I support the proposed amendment for a German because on the one hand we can allow more time and, uh, and room for maneuver for the secretary. And secondly, we need more, more wisdom to deal with this issue. Uh, we all know that uh, politics is about is the art of compromise and we need more wisdom. I think we've made a very good start. Mrs. Regina Yeb sent out a positive message. She doesn't need to, you know, uh, oppose this uh, uh, proposal, but she doesn't have to be forced to support this motion. That's why she proposed this condition that is according to Section 21 of our ROP. She is moving a motion for our discussion. And this motion is different from the motions we normally move because it's an agenda item and it is binding. It's not like the motions that we move which are not binding. It can bring about a substantive change so that government can uh, come to a better agreement with DISCO. Over our, uh, during our discussion in the last few days, I don't see any member who are totally against this uh, funding application. We just want to get a better deal. We understand the disagreement um it's a bad one. It's really it's a step in the right direction. If the pro-establishment members feel that the secretary is not taking any step forward, and if Legco would like to have more say over the agreement between this land and the government, I think we can invoke um, the FCP 21. Mrs. Regina Ip has um, made a very good suggestion. In this uh, political tussle, um, she has put forward an eminently good um, idea uh, to deal with um, this uh, particular issue. We can impose uh, new conditions to deal with this issue. I think Mr. Holden Chow should support this. Now, he always talks about um, compromising. I think the DAB uh, might wish to consider FCP 21. I think uh, Mrs. Regina Yip's proposal is uh, reasonable. We have to make sure that um, the Disneyland um, should be uh, turning the business around. And there ought to be uh, further room for, for maneuver. I would support her proposal. Now, we keep saying that we need wisdom to deal with this bad agreement. If we want compromise, we can come up with a new direction now to make this happen. And I hope the members will display um, the courage uh, and not uh, just support the administration and and, and vote for this uh, proposal. Mr. Dong Kwa Hong. Now, in the pro-establishment camp, uh, there are members uh, who thought that uh, there are problems with the deal made in 1999. Let's go has very limited power. If the um, government uh, comes for funding, um, we, w we have to, to uh, talk with the administration. I don't know how the pro-establishment members think. 
um, they they would vote uh, for a certain proposal, and then uh, in a few years' time, they would say that they've been cheated. Um, the link read is a case in point. The MTRC privatization is a case in point. Um, the um, privatization of um, the um, the KCRC is a case in point. Mr. Martin now said um, specifically that it was ridiculous, but he said that uh, we've already made a commitment and we have to continue. I beg to differ. Now, someone talks about one belt, one road, and a bigger bay um, development, and we're following suit. This is not beneficial to Hong Kong, and we are we are saying that uh, we can do something else. And Doctor uh, Mr. Quek So is saying that we are objecting for the sake of objection. Mr. So, why are you supporting this? On what basis do you support this? Now, if um, the company runs out of money, they would be um, uh, raising capital in the market. Now someone said that uh, we um, we we um, managed to um, beat uh, Singapore. Now in Singapore they have um, the Universal Studio. I think the pro-establishment members should think about it. You you know full well that this is a coffin, and you're prepared to lie in it. I urge the pro-establishment members not to stay here. They go they go go for lunch. Uh, Mr. Gary Chan, you walk your dog somewhere. Well, he's fond of dogs, and he would be um, staying with uh, people who are fond of dogs. Uh, Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, stop yawning. Go, go and sleep um, at home. I think you have to think twice about it. Mr. Raymond Chan, three minutes. Chairman, I'm thankful to Mr. Um, Ten and Mrs. Yip uh, for supporting the uh, German motion. I hope that uh, Secretary So uh, would know that. Uh, you may say that we are objecting for objection's sake. I do think uh, Mr. Tian or Mr. Sip um, are objecting for the objection's sake. They are looking at the issue from the Hong Kong people's point of view, uh, or from the government's point of view. They are not uh, really uh, cutting off their nose despite their face. I know that for the pro-establishment Members to support the German motion, it may not, it may be a bit of a tall order. And if we adjourn the meeting, they, we cannot um, discuss uh, the AIIB issue. Now at one o'clock now, I think the um, it doesn't make any difference today. I don't think uh, we would we, we would be uh, able to cast uh, a vote unless um, the um, the chairman um, were to to um, to act otherwise. So I hope that uh, members will support the adjournment of the meeting. Now, even if um, you don't want to, you step, step step aside and refrain from voting. Mr. Ronick Chen, I'm grateful to you for asking so many questions this morning. The administration and Disneyland just refuse to answer them because they are dragging out the issue, but when the time is right, um, the, the chairman will handle the matter on their behalf. But they are not engaging us in any effective discussion. I don't think we should uh, condone the administration uh, for taking this measure. Mr. Xu uh the Liberal Party, I am disappointed with him. That the Liberal Party um, doesn't see eye to eye with the administration on many issues. If we drag out the issue, and if they uh, re rely on the on the chairman to to handle the matter for them, then it's not good enough. I think we have to answer all the questions. We have to deal with all the dissenting voices. Yesterday, uh, regarding the franchised uh, taxis, the um, medical equipment, and the uh, tobacco um, images. 
Now we we had a fair amount of discussion before taking the decision. The apparently the administration doesn't want to answer and address all the questions, and you're blindly proceeding to vote. And, and and I'm sure that you are blind to supporters of the administration. I don't think there should be so many blind supporters of the administration. If you can't support this agreement, please step aside. It will achieve the same result. We're going to have another week uh, for discussion. Mr. Charles Mock, Chairman, I support this adjournment uh, motion. Mrs. Um, Regina Ip has uh, put forward uh, very constructive proposals uh, and imposed certain conditions. And there are poor establishment members who uh, see likewise. Mrs. Ip uh, ran for uh, chief executive um, office, and she didn't get the support of um, the Western and and also um, the mainland um, authorities. Now I understand that maybe she isn't obedient enough. Now, obedience alone um, is not enough. This is not a political issue. If the pro-establishment members are bold enough, if they have um, the public interests um, uppermost in their mind, and they, they would command the, the respect of the public. Now, this sum of money, $5 billion or so, dollars, uh, represent a uh, significant interest. You may uh, say that this is uh, only a fraction um, in the context of the overall uh, budget we have, now, but this $5 billion is a significant sum of money. It can be spent on many, many items in Hong Kong. Now, this is an item that, that doesn't have uh, any urgency. I wonder why they cannot wait another week, another fortnight. Is it a political gesture? In the remaining couple of months, um, the CYL administration is um, confronting us, or is he confronting the next um, administration? Or is there any other interest involved? I'm not pointing any accusing finger at anybody at all, but it doesn't sound logical. But this is um, a big sum of money. I. I have reason to believe that um, there should be some investigation as to why they have to act like this. If um, we find that uh, Mr. Leong is uh, being confrontational, I mean, nobody can understand his logic, um, to be honest, then we feel that this is um, um, an agreement uh, with the the uh, private company and with that there are so many doubts. I must say this um, to Disneyland that this is domestic uh, matter for Lechco, uh, for Hong Kong. Um, they the the administration should um, should have discussed with uh, Lechco first uh, before approaching you, and we feel um, sorry that um, you have you have to um, um, to to uh, uh, live with this. Now, in the U.S., if they spend all the money on the military and cut the welfare, then they will not be good enough in Hong Kong. I mean, we're facing a similar situation. I hope that you wouldn't explain this um, to your American bosses. Dr. Edward Yu, Chairman, I have already made available the information on the four scenarios. When it comes to business decision, or investment decision, we ought to have the different scenarios in our projection before we understand the exposure that, that we have. If we just look at the, the returns and not look at the, uh, the risks, then we are likely to plunge ourselves um, in disaster. According to the limited information in the paper, you're looking at the linear growth of 3.9% in terms of visitor number, and this is an impossible projection. In the past decade or so, if you look at the growth uh, in the visitor number, we have seen um, a clear picture that for the first couple of years, um, the attraction means that, um, that there is a growth, and then the, the number will be um, tapering off. Now you're using a linear uh, projection of 3.9 percent growth, and this is um, against um, the economic uh, projection. So I have um, the 
a high growth and a low growth uh, scenario. And this is um, in line with um, the actual economic situation with new attraction for the cup first couple of uh, years there may be apparent growth and it will decelerate uh, and then it would be uh, tailing off. Our projection is that this project uh, will be offering uh, between uh, minus $2.5 billion and $2.2 .2 billion within this uh, region. Now we're devoting uh, 10 Point nine billion dollars, and there is um, a fifty percent chance that um, this will be making a loss. And I think we have to make this clear to the investors. Unfortunately, we cannot see this uh, from the information. So I support the idea of uh, invoking FCP twenty one, and if um, we. Um, endorse this funding, we have to have an exit option. There is a 50% chance of um, sustaining a loss. If in the likely event that this scenario were to materialize, then we would have made the right decision today. And that is that uh, we would rather delay it a little bit and come up with an exit option in the agreement. If this scenario uh, were to materialize, uh, we will have an escape uh, route. Lao Xiu Lai, compared with an a German, I I am more in favor of the a German debate because I think the government we have to hold the government accountable for what it has done in the last eighteen years. We have to consider whether we can fight for a better negotiation strategy, bring in a third party, or cut down our you know stakes. Or, or, or introduce new facilities like Legoland. The government has not done that. Instead, it just surrendered to Disney and asked us to approve the funding. That is very irresponsible. I think we should first have an, an adjourn, adjourn this debate. I think the vote we took just now was very close, but still we were beaten. So I would support an adjournment, but the government this week will, should provide us with supplementary papers to tell us why in the last 18 years they have made no progress at all? Uh, have are you have do you have you know the criteria ready for bringing a third party investment and also the strategies for 2020? I think we can give you time for you to give us a supplementary information. If you don't do that, then LegCo will work on Section 21. We can draft motions which are binding and to to add extra conditions, like Mrs. Yip's motion, which is a very good motion. Uh, we can exercise our prerogative uh, and discharge our responsibility to protect the, the, the public offer. There is no urgency here that we must approve this uh, funding application this week. We can take a week's time to perfect our strategy to ensure the public funds are properly spent so that we would not have to, for example, ignore uh, you know, the, 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 the well-being of children and, and well senior citizens, for example, who don't even get proper dental care. Instead, you are asking us to invest more on, on, on Disney and say children need it. That is really hypocritical. I think we should give you another week. You should, you know, you know, you know uh, make more preparations make a better preparation and come back to us instead of forcing us to approve it today. Uh, looking at the paper uh, 18 years ago, even the advisor at the time, uh, Professor Liu, of the, the uh, provost of the Chinese University said that the government should not subsidize these private enterprises. Even if we had no choice, the government should opt out as soon as possible. So in the last 18 years, have you considered opting out from this uh, venture as soon as possible? Uh, I think we can give you a week, a week so that you can prepare a detailed answer for us and the people of Hong Kong. Otherwise, these tens of billions of dollars, which are, is a small amount in your eyes, are very important for the people of Hong Kong. I would rather that you spend it on citizens and children rather than ignoring their welfare. When Mr. Leung Yu Chung was speaking, uh, you were not even looking at him. Uh, Mr. Kong Chun Yu, like I said earlier, we should not in such haste, approve the funding application for $5,400 million today and 
5,400 million dollars, we can build almost 19 PRX units. On the one hand, you're asking us to, to, to inject more cash into the, the Disney theme park. At the other hand, on the other hand, you're ignoring the sufferings of uh, many of the uh, poor people. Some colleagues already said that, uh, you know, you know, I think the business Disney represent doesn't really have no place to be here today. The, it is government which should be responsible and you should really be giving clear answers to our questions. But the more questions we ask, the more confused we are, the more information we would like to, to have. You need to convince us and the people who are concerned as to why we need to use taxpayers' money. Every citizen in Hong Kong on average have to pay $800, uh, $900 in order to help Disney, you know, with this expansion project, in order to enhance its competitiveness. It would appear to be all right for Hong Kong to have a Disney theme park. We're not, you know, uh, asking whether we should have the Disney theme park. The question is whether or not we should continue to make the, the equity injection. We made a mistake before. We were not very meticulous when we negotiated the details. I think the German debate just now, uh, the, you, as we all saw, the, the outcome was very close. Uh, even some colleagues from the pro government camp were very dissatisfied. Should we therefore just turn a blind eye and approve this uh, application anyway? I think some of the members from the pro government camp are popularly elected members. I think. Uh, it, we, we, even when the the, the, the dental care, it, even the citizens don't you know get proper dental care. The money is not spent on on people improving people's livelihood. I mean, if you look at the Disney theme park in other parts of the world, uh, do they also rip off the government of the land like in the same way? According to your calculation, it's very likely that uh, you will be incurring a loss and you may even have to come back and ask for more funding in future. So how can that be? Today, we've asked many questions. We are just discharging our duty as electrical member. Jeremy Tam, I speak in support of oh, Mr. Yip Yip Kinin. I support. I speak in support of the uh, German motion, and a German seems to be a positive, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, choice. But I don't think there's any positive option. Uh, this morning, uh, we t we told that we have two options. We either can support or object to this funding uh, application, but we've now come to the point when we can see that we need time to address this problem that is in between supporting and objecting to this motion there's a very large gray area that is other than giving our full support or totally objecting to this proposal we could consider a conditional support so there are three options in front of us when we are faced with these three options we shouldn't just make a decision uh, today the third choice of a conditional support for this funding application. Different members have put forward different suggestions. Mrs. Regina Yip uh, said, suggested that pursuant to Section 21 of the ROP of the Finance Committee, she moved an amendment. And this motion is a binding motion. It proposed an alternative option, that is, we can support the funding application, but with conditions. Uh, uh, the condition proposed by Mrs. Yip is that, first of all, during this term of let's go, we, sh we should not be asked to deal with the same problem again in future. And secondly, if Disney cannot turn around and make a profit, uh, the government should consider should consider renegotiating with Disney to re to to actually, you know, uh, reduce our stake in Disney or even opt out. The philosophy behind this is our participation in the Disney theme park project. Should the government continue with its participation in this way, or should there be a change? If this is not the proper, you know, 
mode of cooperation? Should we continue with this JV uh, uh, public-private, uh, you know, uh, participation uh, joint venture model? So I think we need to time to consider the three options. And secondly, the officials should also uh, give us a full answer. That is, what is the prospect if we continue to work with Disney? What are the likely scenarios? If you could give us a detailed answer that next time when we come back we will be able to make a decision and choose among the three options. I think that is the only responsible thing we can do. Mr. Chen Chi Chen. Mr. Michael Teen. I'd like to repeat once again that as a member of the pro government camp, I think all colleagues know my position in respect of this uh, issue. I think the proper way to deal with this is to adjourn it. The pr proposal put forward by the government is not acceptable, but if I have to support the adjournment, it would conflict with my principle because after the adjournment, we will revive the discussion and that will slow down our discussion of the other items. And so what I'd like to share with colleagues is that members of the pro government camp, I'd like to ask you all whether using the proposal put forward by the government, we should accept it for the time being. They claim that they've already done the best. I believe that as well. I'm sorry, I may be insinuating, you know, something uh, about yourself. If the current administration has done its best, does it mean that the next administration does it mean that the next administration cannot do even better? Let's think about that. I've spoken on this issue many times already. It is Disney which is anxious, not Hong Kong. If the visitor numbers continue to fall, so the profits that they've been making will continue to shrink. And and we only sh share half of the losses. So time is on our side. And I have great confidence in Carrie Lam. I would also like to say, put it on record. Uh, now, this is my personal opinion. I don't represent any political party. I believe that if we, you know, veto this uh, uh, project, there's nothing Disney can do. Uh, Disney cannot say that if we fa refuse to negotiate, they won't refuse. They won't negotiate with us any further in future. When that happens, Carrie Lam's new team can negotiate again with them. And when it, when her team come back to us, I can tell you that the terms, uh, no matter how what uh, whether the terms that she can you know negotiate with Disney is better than uh, the president deal or not. Now, if both administration has done its level best and still cannot get a better deal, then I would be prepared to support the, the funding application. Or well, my position is very simple. I have greater confidence in the next administration than the current one. And what the next administration can, can, can whatever, uh, I would consider the deal, you know, uh, you know, made by, negotiated by the next administration. Uh, and I don't believe it will be a deal worse than than this one. Chairman, I also support the proposal for a German. For any of these items involving funding applications, the pro government camp, the democratic camp, and even the uh, locals have such strong views. I hope the Bureau and Disney can take this proposal back and, and negotiate uh, further uh, on this. I can't say whether I have more confidence in the current administration or the next administration. I always have no confidence in the government. I don't. I have not seen that you've tried your level best to fight for our interests and, and fight for the best deal. I was talking about the WSD. Uh, Mr. So was, uh, was la uh, laughing uh, as, uh, as if I was, uh, you know, you know, uh, 
digressing. But I think Hong Kong people is being held hostage. I mean, we have no bargaining power when it comes to water from the Dong Dong Dong, uh, you know, Dong Jing because we are buying. 820 million cubic feet of water. We only use up 27.6%. We have to pay, uh, you know, for the uh, 820 million cubic, you know, feet of water. So what can we do? The only thing we can do is to rely more on local sources and reduce our reliance on the Dongzhong River. We're wasting, you know, you know, close to 900 million dollars. That's enough to fill to, to pay for the. The, the deficit in Disney, but the government is not able to tell us how they can negotiate for a better price for the Dongzhong River uh, water. Uh, for in in the case of Disney, for the people of Hong Kong, this is a business that is running at a loss, and for Disney, it is some uh, a deal for in which people are paying them to uh, to do this business. Has the government done its best to get a bet the best deal for Hong Kong? We've seen this time that there is room for us to do better. We're not saying that it w that 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 we sh will not uh, grant this need additional uh, cash injection so that it can do better. If we, you know, agree to the adjournment, then for the pro government camp, the uh, pan-democrats, then we can have more time to negotiate with Disney to see whether we can come up with a. A deal that is acceptable to both parties and to Hong Kong. I therefore support the proposal that we adjourn now so that we can have some room for maneuver. Last time we put forward our suggestions, the government actually went back and, and, and now and they have come back with some uh, achievements. I hope you will talk again to Disney to fight for the best deal. Chairman, I support the, uh, uh, the adjournment. Mr. Mr. Evan Young, Chairman, I support the adjournment because um, that way uh, we will be liberated uh, from it. The um, pro, uh, pro uh, pandem members have uh, raised a lot of technical issues um, to which we don't have an answer. I don't see how the administration can come up with uh, any convincing and proper replies uh, within. Just a couple of hours, so I hope that um, uh, Mr. So uh, and his team will be arrested and come up with um, um, good enough reply to us um, in the uh, next um, week or so. And I hope that the Disney team um, will also take a rest. They don't have to be here. As I said, um, this is um, a um, commercial. Discussion among the shareholders uh, here in this room. I think we can uh, let the Disney team uh, go, and also we should uh, buy a little bit more time so that um, all these um, constructive, uh, far-sighted, uh, and wise. Um, Proposals can be implemented. If you don't allow them uh, some time, how can we see these implemented? So, uh, under the banner of uh, unity, um, they uh, will not um, divide themselves. And I hope that um, the pro establishment uh, members would support um, the, their fellow members who have um, really wonderful wisdom and. In, in the next week or so, I hope that the Secretary will be discussing with the pro-establishment members. Chairman, I'm sure that the, we are not uh, like um, the year 1999. Um, the situation has changed. And in fact, we are giving ammunition to the administration to um, fight for a better deal within um, a short space of time. Through the motion today, we are allowing the administration to accumulate more ammunition um, to to make this happen. I'm sure that uh, you would understand um, the intention that we have. I hope that the pro-establishment members uh, would not um, decline our offer. Now, there were two members from um, the pro-establishment camp who uh, voted um, our way, and I hope that um, more members uh, will will vote in favour. Now, in this beautiful Saturday afternoon, you would go out and have a cup of tea. You don't 
uh, have uh, to to uh, stay here and uh, consume the Disneyland uh, cakes, and you can have a wide variety of choices, and you can have a breath of fresh air outside. That certainly would help. Mr. Wichuai, one minute uh, in response, please. All right, further, further uh, speakers. All right, please press the button. There are gaps. Um, Mr. Jeremy Tam, Chairman. Uh, well, there are gaps or whatever you call it. I, I remember uh, what Mr. Holden Chow said, and and his uh, fellow um, member, uh, Mr. Stephen Ho. Now, for those who were not here, uh, let me recap. At the beginning, Mr. Holden Chow said that he managed to uh, fight for this, um, the two years uh, waiver. Uh, it was uh, down to him. I, I said we have to make it very clear. Now for the bidder, 6.5 percent, that's the base uh, management fee. Uh, that has to be paid. Now for the waived uh, portion, it is the variable management fee. Normally, you've done so badly, you've lost um, uh, $150 million. Now, Mr. Stephen Ho then said, Jeremy Tam, you don't know any better. You don't just read the paper, and you have to look at the um, the relationship. Mr. Quek So, that they are fellow members, um, or political party members. Uh, even if we're making uh, losses, we still have to pay. And then I uh, go back to the paper. Why do you know something that I don't? And now he said that um, they have the sincerity to talk um, with them. Now I do have the sincerity. Um, on the 29th of March at 4:45 uh, p.m., I've been talking with uh, Mr. Greg So and I asked the same question, and uh, the information wasn't disclosed. Is it because um, I didn't know how to put the question? That that, that wasn't the case. After some uh, soul searching. Now I, I've got this paper according to um, the first of April um, response from the administration one o three sixteen to seventeen bracket o one para seven refers to the calculation method. There were some questions raised by members in public in a meeting, and then he the paper says that because of um, the royalties and the management fees. Um, the projection involve uh, confidential information. You may say that they're talking about um, their losses and the profits. That this is not confidential information. That they said that um, they cannot project um, all these um, financial performance, um, whether losses are sustained, and and whether um, after the losses um, they can still charge the the variable uh, management fees. But this is a financial performance. Who is telling a lie? I do think Mr. Holden Chow is telling a lie. He sounds so really sincere. Is it the case that the administration told a lie? All right, Mr. Wichuai, please, one minute. Chairman, thank you. I think members have made it clear that uh, by adjourning the meeting, we are buying some time for us to deal with the issue um, seriously and see how we can identify the best uh, possible mode of cooperation for Hong Kong. We're not uh, saying that we should um, get rid of um, Disneyland. We'd like to have more choices, more options in the cooperation, um, in the partnership. Um, we'd like to have uh, better options. The secretary said that this is the best uh, deal. We'd like to have a better deal to um, make sure that the taxpayers' money is uh, used uh, properly. So we're moving this uh, motion of adjournment. I hope the members will uh, support this, so that the administration and the Disneyland uh, will engage um, in further discussion. All right, I'll now put this to the vote. To five minutes, please.
。诶，大家咧，而家我哋睇。All right, members. We are voting on whether we should adjourn the meeting. Remember, please proceed to vote. Voting now ends as it displayed the results. 22 in favor, 28 against. The motion has been negatived. Mr. Jeremy Tam, you've got one minute. Chairman, um, one minute first, please. Can I put questions? Yes. Yes, please. What about the um, SCP-21? If uh, we proceed to uh, 37A, um, can members under SCP-21 submit uh, further motions or further supplement? Yes. But you need to have um, the six-day notice and also the two-day uh, notice. Mr. Jeremy Tam. Pardon? Isn't it two days? Yes, um, six days, a minimum of two days. That's always been the case. So next week, uh, after 37A, we can still submit um, FCP 21 motions, and we're not uh, putting this to the vote. Right, the procedure is that uh, for the motion to be submitted, we you need to have a six days uh, notice. Um, the chairman cannot uh, waive, waive um, the two day notice. Now, 37A, we can deal with that. And we can also deal with the motions. Can we discuss uh, the motions? Yes, indeed. And the motions can be discussed because they are binding. All right, Mr. Jeremy Tam, one minute, please. And thereafter, I will announce my uh, ruling. Chairman, thank you. My question for Mr. So, uh, the Secretary, very simple. Now, given that the this land is sustaining a loss, can they still charge the variable management fee? Making a loss, uh, what do you mean? Can you define that? Now, we've made it very clear that uh, after uh, uh, 2009, we have changed um, the mode of um, management fee payment. We have the base. Uh, management management fee six point five percent and variable uh, fee uh, not uh, zero to uh, zero point uh, zero to eight percent. Now, if um, they make a loss of um, one hundred and fifty million dollars, can they charge the variable management fee? And we're not talking about a net income. Uh, it, it's uh, not after depreciation; it is before depreciation. EBITDA. Now, Mr. Chow said that um, despite the losses, still have to pay. Is it the case? Chairman, I've made it very clear that we are charging according to EBITDA. I'm sorry. I'm referring to Section 23 of the Rules of Procedure. So what is your question? point of order? Section 23, I think we've said it very clearly just now. Uh, Mr. Chen Jijin refused to return to his seat because uh, before the last round of uh, questions, I would uh, give you my ruling. Now that I'm going to make a ruling, you are trying to rely on the rules to cause obstruction. So what is your question? You are speculating my motive, Chairman. Mr. Chen Chi, whatever Mr. Chen Jijin said, I don't necessarily have to comply with. Mr. Jeremy Tan, all right, fine. So what, what exactly is your question? According to Section 23, uh, this is what the rule says. Non-confidential. It explains what are confidential and non-confidential documents. In FC 103, uh, you know, uh, bracket uh, one, 
It said that the questions I asked was about confidential documents, and the secretary should not disclose to me whether or not this knee is running a loss. But why is it that Mr. Holden Chow had obtained such an information? Did he obtain the information from the bureau? Was there a confidential paper uh, for which we have no access? And uh, if that's the case, I think we we should take a look at that paper. Uh, otherwise, he would have disclosed a confidential. Paper. It's very. I can say that I've not given any paper to Holden Chow, which I have not given to the rest of the members. No, no. Then Mr. Holden Chow will have to clarify. Otherwise, uh, this council will really want to query whether or not uh, he had disclosed any confidential information pursuant to Section 23. I ruled that the chairman, the secretary, said that there had been no confidential papers. Let me first of all explain my ruling. I think we must understand that for this item, the government is seeking additional funding uh, to fund the expansion of the Disney theme park. Three members have proposed that if the item were approved by the FC. Now, three members have made this uh, suggestion. Now, for the three. Members' suggestions were approved by the FC. Now, please, uh, Mr. Tam, uh, do not interrupt while I'm speaking. I think I've already made a ruling already. The Secretary said that there have been no confidential papers and no confidential papers have been leaked. In fact, the Secretary has said it very clearly. He said that there have been no such papers. He's saying it in this council, we have to trust him. And you can hold him liable if you found him to have lied. Please, uh, please, you know, uh, do not interrupt what I need to do now. Um, I think I've already dealt with your question. Given that the motion moved by the three members, if approved by the FC, will have an impact on how the government will implement the expansion of this new theme park. I think procedurally the best approach is to first consult the views of the government and the members who move the motion can respond. Having fully considered the, the views, then we can make a decision. And I think this is the same uh, uh, as uh, how the president would deal with uh, motions which are legally bind which are binding. Secondly, the three members pursuant to Section 21 of the ROP of the Finance Committee move to motion pursuant to Section 2B of the Laws of Hong Kong's legal basis. Having made reference to the three members, the, legal, uh, the, uh, the Secretary's uh, uh, opinion, if I think those conditions should be related to how the FS uh, deal with such funds. The first item is that the government should first negotiate with the uh, Walt Disney Company and to amend the royalty, to make the basis of calculation for the management fees and the royalties, and that there should be consulta public consultation. These three conditions compare with uh, how the FS, uh, you know, make dispense with uh, funding allocation approved by LegCo is not relevant. That's why I won't approve it. Secondly. Regarding the land use for phase two of the Disney theme park, uh, there should be. I don't think this is uh, related to how the government, uh, the, the FS, would dispense funds to to to, to, to fund the, the 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 expansion of the theme park. Okay, we will now move on to the last round. If you don't press the button, then it would mean that I take it that uh, nobody would like to speak. Uh, Fernando Jiao, you've given us your ruling. I hope you will give us the opportunity to seek clarification from you as to uh, as to how you make your ruling. We are at a meeting. You said that the amendment must be compatible with how the FS dispenses the funding approved by this council. I want you to clarify by what you mean by uh, dispensing the funds. Well, I have my ruling in both English and Chinese, which will be circulated. Members would understand that it's 
very unlikely that we'll be able to, uh, you, you know, finish our, our deliberation on this item uh, within today's meeting. And I will not discuss with you my ruling at this meeting. Chair, I didn't say that I want to discuss that with you. I just want you to clarify. What's the difference between clarification and discussion? Now, who would like to speak? Uh, please press the button. Otherwise, if we don't press the button, uh, what's wrong for me to invite members to press the button? Claudia Mo. Thank you, Chairman. I think you made a very important ruling. It could easily become a precedent, but you just made a verbal, you know, you know, uh, uh, ruling, and I couldn't hear it clearly. Many of the words you said, uh, the word "chifu" in Chinese, the "fs," uh, "let go," I could only vaguely understand what you meant. I would demand that you immediately give me the English to Chinese version of the ruling. You cannot give the impression that uh, whatever you've said is done. And that there is a, this is you know there is a live cast of our proceeding. I would require a written text, Miss Mo. Uh, this is exactly the reason why we have uh, our rules. The requirement our requirement is that there should be six days prior notice. So I've already made a waiver. So at least there should at least be two days notice, Miss Edichi. Actually, I asked him to uh, submit it uh, by 5 p.m. He asked for it to be postponed to 7. I also agree. He submitted it to, gave it to me at half past 7. How can I give you the, the document in Chinese and English? Uh, if you continue with that, I will insist on the six-day advance notice requirement. How can you do that? Miss Claudia Mo, you kept saying that this is what you want. Does it mean that we always get what we want? If I don't want people to, uh, members to, not to filibuster, can you do that? There are many things that you cannot do, so we must stick to the rules. So I have finished. Dr. Lao Siu Lai, three minutes. Dr. Lao Siu Lai, if you don't speak, I'll move on to the next one. Is, is he asking a question about the rule of procedure? Dr. N. Jiang? Please press the button. If they don't want to speak, then I will speak. I don't understand whether we are dealing with a, a, a point regarding our rules of procedure. Of course, I understand you want to delay this until the next week. I think even based on the, 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 uh, the present progress, you would be able to postpone it until the next week. Chairman, I really object that you are into our last round uh, this is the right of members. Some members have not even spoken today. I hope this is not the final round. This definitely will be the la last round. You are now using up my time. You must give me back my few seconds. I already proposed this morning that 18 years ago the government promised us that that the total amount should be that an agreement should be reached when the amount was of uh, 5.7 million dollar and suggested that we should approach a third party. I raised this point this morning. I'm sure you have had some time to uh, prepare an answer to that question. So Mr. So, could you tell me what are your criteria? How would you approach a third uh, party investor? What had been the experience and which are the third party investors that you've approached? I'll ask Mr. Lee to, Mr. Lee to, to, to answer the question. Thank you for the member's question. In 1999, we were saying that if our equity reached, uh, before it reached the amount of $5.7 billion, both shareholders must uh, reach an agreement regarding a third party investor, and both parties will have the discretion to approve. But if you look at the whole paper, it says that during that period, if we have the intention to uh, bring in a third investor, both parties must agree agree to the status of that uh, third investor. That was the intention. It's not that during that period we must bring in a third uh, investor. I also like to clarify that 
It doesn't say that you must find a third investor in your paper. You said you must. In respect of the principle governing the choice, the, the, the you know for, uh, the, the, uh, the third investor, uh, what are the uh, criteria? In that paper, we said that we could uh, choose to reach uh, uh, to, to, to agree on a set of criteria. We didn't say that we must within a certain period of time do that. As I said before, to bring in a third investor, we must see whether it was the right time. If it was the, the, not the right time, then even the third investor, uh, bringing in a third investor may not be beneficial to the company. Your paper in 1999 said that during the initial period, it wasn't appropriate to find a third investor. Subsequently, you needed to have a third part, third investor. You, you requested that before the, the equity reached $5.7 billion, you will reach an agreement regarding the criteria. Have you discussed those criteria over the last 18 years? We're talking about whether the time is right. If the time is right, we would always consider, uh, you know, finding a third investor uh, a viable option. Mr. Yip Kim Lin, I haven't spoken yet. Do I have five minutes? Why? Why three minutes? Well, we have 15 hours of deliberation. I'd like to ask why you haven't asked any question yet. When I decide to ask my question, first of all, that is my prerogative. I also need to reflect on the issue before I ask my question. Okay, Mr. Yip, are you going to speak? Yes. But I'd like to ask why I'm not given five minutes and not three. I've already said that this is the last round. I've already appealed to members three or four times that you should come down and speak as soon as possible. I've made many warnings and appeals already. You check the records of LegCo, if you like. If you don't speak, Mr. Yip, many people are waiting in the queue. Mr. James Toe. Chairman, I'm still speaking. First of all, I'd like to put on record that I'm entitled to five minutes. And secondly, I already asked a question earlier, that is we're now faced with three choices. Originally we have two options, now there are three. Other than giving our full support or objection to this funding application, we should have the option of giving our conditional support. Mrs. Virginia Yip already you know, made one suggestion. So I'd like to ask the Secretary what is his view, uh, whether the government is in a position regarding that proposal. If we believe that during the current Let's Go session, uh, if we've given out support for this funding application, there shouldn't be another application for, for, for equity injection. Could the government tell us what is its position or, or, or on that? Chairman. So I think this is the option that we believe is the best option that we uh, we, we, we have. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Yip, so in the days to come, whether you will come back for further funding, you don't have any position, you don't have any ideas. Chairman, I cannot speak on behalf of the next term within this term of administration. This is the only option we have. Mr. Yip, when you consider this, uh, do you have any um, preconceived ideas that, uh, I mean, you have only two months or so. Now we would look at the economic benefits. I've said this many, many times. For the Bureau, if Disneyland cannot um, uh, turn the business, uh, turn the losses around, um, the administration should uh, reduce its role uh, in the uh, joint venture with the government. Has the government considered this? Well, we keep our options open. Uh, if appropriate, we would introduce a third party investor. Dr. Helena Wong, three minutes. Chairman, how many minutes? Last round, three minutes. I've got some time slashed. No, I've uh, announced this uh, long ago. I'd like to ask the legal advisor, Mr. Chairman, is there any restriction on the um, members um, putting questions? Well, 
Well, Chairman, this is my time. Please, please, you have to compensate my time. I compensate one minute. And let me make a plea here. Well, you are using my time to make the plea. Well, I'll let you finish. Chairman, you cannot um, butt in uh, any time you like uh, when members are speaking. I think you are abusing your power. You are abusing your authority and strip uh, members of the legitimate right to put questions. And this is um, against the uh, FC procedures. And this is setting a bad precedent. Chairman, business wise, we have to ascertain um, whether this is an appropriate move um, to make the um, equity injection. I hope that um, they can turn the business around. I hope the administration would explain to the members of the public, assuming that um, you can um, earn a profit of ten thousand dollars under the ratio in 2017. Hong Kong uh, has a 53 percent um, shareholding and Disneyland 47. Uh, assuming that we make um, ten thousand dollars, how do you split up the ten thousand dollars, and where does the money go? Uh, will the Disneyland uh, be uh, taking the money back to the parent company in the U.S. and also how much money will be going into the public coffers? Where where will the money go? Can you explain this to the public, Mr. So? Assuming that th this proposal is endorsed, um, we are going to have the shareholding of 52 percent uh, instead of 53, and the dividends. Um, Will be shared in accordance with um, the this, this shareholding ratio, Dr. Wang. Over the next uh, five to ten years, how much dividend are we going to get, and where will the money be going? This is so. It all depends on the company's strategy. Now, uh, f now for uh, the three years of profits, uh, we didn't have any dividends, and the money um, remained um, in the Disneyland to increase the, the attractions. So your time is up, uh, Dr. Wong. I am disappointed that every time I speak, um, I I got challenged. Now I would um, read out this paper uh, many many times. The court has made it very clear that the chairman of the FC can regulate the meeting, uh, can impose um, conditions regarding adjournment, and and also um, the the um, the speaking time. Now this is what the court said, and you're challenging the court's uh, verdict, and I don't think you should be challenging my decision. I think you have to be reasonable, Chairman. All right then, Mr. Leung Yu Chung, three minutes, Chairman. Now you can only limit the number of times members speak. You cannot stop members speaking. This is not reasonable. If members are speaking too many times, if members are starting to repeat themselves, it's only reasonable that you stop them. But there are members who haven't spoken at all, and you're stopping them, and this is a wholly unreasonable decision. I hope that you would change your ways, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to uh, launch a legal, um, a judicial review. I hope that there would be a verbatim uh, record. Uh, if I don't uh, launch a judicial review, I won't call myself long. All right, let me say this. I hope the members will understand that uh, when it comes to this item, I've been exercising my forbearance. I've tried my best to be fair and just and let members speak as much as possible. But there are members who are speaking for the seventh for the sixth time and most of the members have already spoken. Mr James Toe, please, please do not yell in your seat. Don't yell in your seat, otherwise I'll be inviting you out. Mr Toe, please, please uh, stop. Stop it. If you yell, 
continuously. I'll invite you out of the chamber. I haven't quite finished. No more warning. I'm going to invite you out. I'm going to send you out if you carry on like this, please. If you, if you yell as I speak, I send you out. Let me just get this out of the way. I've been trying to uphold your right to speak. I try my best, and you know full well that、um, we may not be able to get this out of the way today. Why do you still have to be so pushy? The chairman has been very fair. I'm. Being fair to you, you said you've got nothing positive to say about me, and you were trying to push me. I mean, at an appropriate time, I would end the the discussion. I have the right,、um, as confirmed by the court. Why do you still insult me? You you haven't in, you haven't told me why、uh, for 15 hours. You still didn't come down and put questions. Right, members have the responsibility to be here. I said what I wanted to say. I don't really want to get bogged down on this. If if, if、um, you, I mean, members of the public can see how unreasonable and how、um, unruly you are. I think we have to、uh, resume the order. Who's next, Mr. Lung Yujong? Please carry on. Calm down, please. I've I've been trying to accommodate members. I've done my best. I know you you know full well. But if you give me trouble, then I I can't really do anything. I I have to, I have to take bold decision. Yes, please, Chairman. You said you enjoy the authority to reduce members' time. You said you've been doing this many times. No, no, not reduce the time.、Um, end the debate. That the, some members are supposed to be talking for 15 minutes, and and you you reduce the time to、uh, three minutes. Now you said you're backed up by the court verdict, but in the verdict, do you have、uh, to specify that、uh, members have to、uh, speak at an early stage if、uh, members are otherwise engaged, and he's only he can only be here now, and you're reducing the speaking time to three minutes? Is this、uh, what you're allowed to do? In the verdict, second, have I repeated myself, Chairman? What have I repeated? If I haven't repeated, if I put、um, sensible arguments, why do you disallow me? Is it、uh, in the verdict、uh, for you to do so? I want you to respond, Chairman. Am I being repetitive? A secretary, please、uh, have the verbatim record. Whatever judicial review you like to、uh, file doesn't really matter. It's fine, but I have to respond to、uh, Mr. Ted Hui. Now the key issue is that、uh, we have been discussing for so long. I've been reminding members that、um, they should come and make、uh, their remarks quick, and I, I don't have the responsibility to wait until、um, the members to to come whenever he likes. Mr. Lin Yuzhong. Please beg your pardon.、Um, sorry, keep you waiting, Chairman. Thank you. We cannot dictate the time members choose to speak. You simply can't dictate members because they can choose to to speak any time they like. They they may follow the the proceedings and they choose to speak any time they like. This is their right, and I think you have to respect、um, members' decision. As to when they they wanted to speak, why to deprive members of this right? If members are speaking too many times, you can reduce or you can curtail the the the,、um, the numbers. That's fine, but the meeting is not、um, coming to an end. The member hasn't quite spoken, and and you're trying to to strip him of the right to speak, and this is wholly、um, unreasonable. Now, if there are members who haven't quite spoken, you allow them、um, one or two times. If you、uh, disallow the member, then it's not reasonable. He has the right to speak. Why do you、uh, strip him of the right? It's not reasonable. I'd like to put this to the administration. You said you've come up with the best possible、um, proposal. In the past, has the administration considered withdrawing from the partnership? If not, why not? The administration said that they don't really want to engage in、um, partnership 
with the private sector for 18 years, have you considered、um, pulling out of、um, the business, Mr. So? Well, Chairman, this is an important tourism infrastructure. Over the past 18 years, the government has built up by experience. We don't rule out、uh, the situation where. But don't, don't say、uh, not ruling out the possibility. But ha- for 18 years, have you considered that? For 18 years, my question is: Have you ever considered pulling out, Mr. So, Chairman? I think we have to look at the operational situation. Don't say, don't talk about operational issue.、Uh, don't digress. Answer the question straight, Mr. So. We need to have、um, resources. Are devoted to this、um, to to buttress our tourism facilities. Have you ever considered, Ms. Cordiembo? Three minutes, Chairman. I think、um, the way you are acting is、uh, really hilarious. Your EQ is、uh, dipping. You say that you we are squeezing you, we're pushing you, and you you turn、um, aggressive. And you 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 said that、uh, you're going to be sending、uh, James Toe out of the chamber. You know you talked about、uh, rule of law, and you said that、uh, for 15 hours、um, some members、uh, are not turning up, and and you may be suggesting that、uh, the members are being lazy. Now maybe the member is、um, otherwise engaged, maybe、um, he's got some urgent、um, family business to attend to, or some someone someone、um, has checked into the hospital. Now this.、Um, Five, four, three, one minute、um, arrangement. Can I、uh, follow the proceeding?、Um, can I listen to、um, Mr. Attitude, Mr. Ray Chan, and then I put、uh, questions to the administration? Why can't I do this? Members have the right to put questions. You talked about the rule of law, and I don't think you should be、um, tarring everybody with the same brush. Now we have、um, to, under the law,、um, we 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 have to be lenient, and I mean you said that、um, if if you don't put question at the early stage,、um, then then too bad. Now you said that the members are being barbaric. I think you are being barbaric yourself, Mr. Chairman. Are you going to respond? I don't want to take up your time. That's only right. Uh, uh, Mr. Lau, the、uh, Disney representative.、Uh, now you see、uh, the response here. I do. I understand、uh, the concept of fair play、uh, is enshrined in the、uh, American Constitution. Would you actually call this deal with the Hong Kong government、uh, on behalf of Hong Kong people a fair deal? Secretary, not secretary. This is a question, Mr. Lau, please.、Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not going to comment on on、uh, the deal. Again, I represent the management team on the ground here in Hong Kong.、Uh, my job is to、uh, improve the business as best that、okay. I can with my you, team. Okay, you're not here to comment on that sort of、uh, question. Fine. A follow-up question. Uh, would you、uh, agree that、uh, what we've been talking about is full of gobbledygook? When time is ripe, we will do certain things. That sort of replies. Do you think they are acceptable? Yes or no? Mr. Chairman, again, my job is to run the business and do the best I can with the tools that I have. Thank you. Now, I want to. I, if I may answer your question, you refer to Mr. James Toh. If he had not been interrupting and shouting, I wouldn't have warned him and、uh, and suggested that I would ask him to leave. For Mr. Yip Kin Yun, I've asked him what was the reason why he had not spoken、uh, during the last 15 hours. I think members will understand now. Please keep quiet and let me finish. Mr. Chair, Albert Chen. Uh, last time said that he needed to go to court. He w- was absent the whole morning, so I allowed him five minutes. So I have all my principles and my、uh, my my reasons. Mr. Yip, you've not even、uh, he has not answered my question. He's not even here. So please do not mislead the people of Hong Kong. Ms. Lam Kok Hong, you have three minutes.
Mental Principle. Three minutes. Mr. James, so please stop yelling. You are such a veteran, and I think your performance is really disappointing. I don't know why you are so agitated. I think this is the approach we've been adopting all along. That president has been in place for more than a year. Don't pretend that it just happened. I've already shown members this many times already. If you take objections to the court's ruling before the court, you know, you know, I have always have to follow the ruling of the court. I am a law-abiding citizen, Mr. Lankong. May I start now? Okay, Chairman. You asked me to, you know, you know, apply for judicial review against a decision. I reiterate once again that I want a verbatim record of our proceeding this morning. I have been involved in legal litigations. I I know what that ruling was. At that time, when the president, Mr. Jasper Jung, was not no longer able to control the discussion in this council, he didn't know when the proceedings would end, and that's why, according to the rules of procedure, he invoked the rule concerning the suspension of the, the proceedings of this council. That's not what you've done. I said that according to the procedures of the FC, where does it say that you that you are allowed to suspend the enforcement of the rules of procedure of this uh, committee? If you continue to uh, to to do what you do, I certainly will seek a judicial review against your decision. I hope our secretary, well, if you are uh, preparing to consider that, we needn't, you know, have a very uh, you know, record. Uh, I think you should do that first. I think, in fact, you are wrong. If 70 members, if each of them speak for 15 minutes, our um, meeting will only take about 1,050 minutes or 17 hours. Each of us would only speak for 15 minutes. So what you de so your decision is not reasonable. Suppose all of us present all spoke, it will only take 27 hours. How did you work out that number? If they didn't speak, then they should allow us the time to speak, since they have now become or become dumb, they can, you know, they don't have to speak. Thirdly, even if I were not in Hong Kong, I was in the States, you know, on tour. When I come back, I still have my right to speak. Are you stupid? Even if I were in the States, I have not present at this meeting. I still have my right to speak. If you dare, you can answer the question. I'm demanding for a verbatim record. You dare not answer my question. Are you foolish? Seventy minutes. How long is your 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 record of, of our discussion on this topic? All the people from the government camp have become deaf mutes. So if they don't want to speak, they should give us the time. How can you assume that all members will not speak? I say this once again. Seventy times uh, fifty minutes is one thousand and fifty minutes. Okay, your time is up. Or I can say that I, to I certainly would not agree with you, Mr. Nathan Law. Chairman, I'd like to talk about logic. You said that you, now please value your time. You gave two reasons. You say that we already deliberated for 15 hours, and secondly, you've already appealed to members to come down and speak. It's premised on your judgment that after a certain cut of time, we no longer uh, so we've already exhausted all the time for discussion. You think that for this item, the time is 15 hours. How did you arrive at this, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, criteria? So is it that for, is it the, does it depend on the gravity of the issue, or is it based on the whether members have repeated questions? Chairman, you can't say the court has given me the power and then you can make an arbitrary decision. If you exercise any power at all, you must be governed by rules and procedures. Even for the interpretation of the basic law, there are procedures. 
So, Chairman, you are now exactly, this is what exactly you're doing. You're abusing your power. You talk about the 15 hours. You said you've already appealed to members to come down and speak. You said that's already sufficient ground for you to suspend our deliberation. That is not convincing. Uh, you've not explained why. Uh, when we discussed this item of injecting, you know, five thousand million dollars into cash, uh, Disney, fifteen hours enough. Fifteen hours are enough. Why is that the basis for you to decide to adjourn our deliberations, Chairman? You made two points, but there are many things you've not said. For example, the meeting had never been interrupted. Each and every during each and every second, mem there have been members asking questions, and secondly. Members' right to speak during our meeting should not be subject to any restrictions so long as the meeting is still in progress. He or she should be entitled to come down and speak at any time without having to uh, for, uh, having for you to decide when they should uh, speak. Even if you have made such an appeal, you sh there's no reason for you, no ground for you to have deprived them of the right to speak. Even you, you, if you have that ruling of the court, the important thing is that you must follow the procedure. And don't think that uh, just because you say that you have the power, it doesn't mean that it would mean that well, the way you discharge your 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 your, your duty is is reasonable. Don't pretend to be a gentleman if you are not. So members of public will see this clearly. This is a place where abuse of power is taking on, going on, and it's a place in which the right of popularly elected members uh, to speak is not uh, protected. Eddie G. Chairman, Mr. Yipkin Yoon. Uh, suggested the third way out, and I think this is the uh, right signal regarding the uh, application for equity injection into Disney's theme park. And regrettably, you just directly copy the administration's response and say that our 21 motions have to be related to how the FS dispense with, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the funds. Looking at the Capital Investment Fund uh, Ordinance 5B, it said the FC may provide funding for people who apply as loans, advances, or donations, or non-cash uh, manner, but they must follow the stipulated uh, conditions of the FC. I don't understand why, or perhaps our legal advisor, the government's advice, legal advisor and the FSTP could make that interpretation, that is, the such terms and conditions. Why have they always have to do with how the FS dispense with? You've uh, set the premise or limit. You say that uh, it has to do with the way the ten billion dollars are spent. Uh, according to Section Five B, and the power is not co uh, compatible with the power given to the FC. According to uh, pursuant to Five B, so I'd like to ask the FSTP whether you have any case law. Because if we look at the uh, the the the, uh, the regulation, uh, it doesn't uh, it uh, not to do with how 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 the money is dispensed. And secondly, if you say the twenty one motion have to deal with have to do with how the funding is dispensed, uh, I hope you give us some examples because we have no precedent in Hong Kong. It has never happened uh, before in the FC. I like to ask you why you should be able to do it according to the Section 21. Any other questions? No, I'm asking you. I'm asking the FSTP. You copied. No, I did not. I have made reference of the uh, view of the government and your view. How have you made reference of my views? It was my decision. 
So I think you should put the question to myself and not the administration. I was asking the FSTB why, uh, if we look at 5B, it has nothing to do with uh, how it has to do with how the FS dispense with the funding, but uh, how did they arrive at that interpretation? Nobody has. Could they tell us which motions will satisfy with that criteria of how to dispense with uh, the funding? We said, basically, you're discussing my ruling. And uh, the rule is very clear. The decision of the chairman is final. How can you ask the official to answer the question? Why don't you, you know, write, uh, study my written, uh, you know, ruling, and then you can seek the advice of your lawyers? A member asks a question. There is still some time left. You you interrupted. You use up almost forty seconds of his time. Why won't you let the official answer the question? Why you say it's too complicated for the official to answer the question? You're playing the role of the government as well, the official as well. You're discussing my ruling. You're talking about phase one. He asked why the official had such a, a, a view. So I don't think that has to do with our rules of procedure. Mr. Eddie G. I I think if you remember, Chairman, when I before I moved the uh, German the uh, proposal of German, I did ask uh, uh, the official. I don't think the bureau mind giving a response here. I hope you can let the bureau answer. If they can write, put it in writing, they should be able to answer the question. I reach it again that we shouldn't discuss my decision, Mr. James Toll. We're not engaged in a dialogue. You cannot do that. Mr. James told you can't do that. That is not the right way to conduct a meeting because there's no point for you to suddenly jump up and yell. Anyway, uh, still I will let the officials uh, uh, decide what they, they, uh, uh, they would like to respond. Carol, anything you'd like to say? I think this is unconstitutional. The administration is accountable to the legislature. Thank you. It, when we gave our response, we have consulted legal advice from the DFJ regarding to B. That is the Capital Investment Fund Section Five. It is stipulated that the FS may. Dispense, dispense funds out of the fund. So Section 5B says that when money is dispersed from that fund pursuant to the conditions laid down by the FC, it will be you know linked to uh, you know that part of the fund. The motions moved by the three members and the conditions they propose for the dis disbursement of funds are not related to that. So the government's legal advice is that the motion is out of order. Chen Chi Chin, three minutes. You have not explained why it is not related. Chairman, you are conducting a meeting in a mechanic manner and de denying members a right to speak. That's wrong. You should look at the performance members. If we have in the past, you've said that we were happy repeating ourselves, but this time members have not repeated themselves. The administration, whether it's Gregory So or the other official, uh, I mean. So, I think you are condoning the administration. You are um, allowing the administration to get away with uh, not answering members' questions. And let you deal with it uh, when the time comes. Now there are rumours in the media that uh, you're going to be um, putting this to the vote today. I haven't put many questions. I'd like to save a little bit more time um, to put questions to the administration. The administration basically uh, talked about the um, use of the funding. Under the capital investment fund, uh, and it's got nothing to do with um, the phase one 
um, development. Now, what about um, management fee? It is on the basis of EBITDA. The for the phase one development, um, the idea of um, this is to increase um, the attendance. Now, you said that the management fee, the royalties, has got nothing to do with um, the the phase one. I think you have to explain to us further why why no relationship. Now you said you agree with the administration, but you haven't told us uh, why. Also, I've put uh, some specific questions in the supplementary reply. I asked um, about how much um, the Disneyland has uh, received. Now, the, the in the response, it said that. So uh, it is ten percent less than ten percent of um, the expansion cost. And then they said that the expansion is uh, less than ten percent of um, the the cost. Now, can you be more specific? Can you tell us um, more specific figures? Now we made projection, and you're not prepared to comment. And I mentioned the ten percent. Can you give us some specific uh, figure in the supplementary information, Secretary? Yes, um, Mr. Lau. Um, again, I, we we broke down the cost by percentages uh, as best we can, and I think uh, it's in the uh, appendix in the paper. Well, I think um, they've answered the question, Mr. Charles Mark. Three minutes, Chairman. I don't understand why. It is so urgent. It is so controversial. I think we should uh, leave it and, and move on to the AIIB. And I, I'm not sure why it is so urgent. It was uh, said that there are rumors that um, the, the chairman is going to um, cut short the discussion. Now, you said you're being fair, you're being just. Uh, whether it is uh, fair and just uh, is open uh, to the public. And you cannot say you're going to sit here and say that you're you're fair and um, we're not wrong, we're not right. The chairman's um, authority is to uh, preside over the meeting. You you shouldn't be uh, blowing your own trumpet, and we the the chairman um, cannot exceed the authority. And and you said that um, our performance uh, is is. Um, um, available is um, open to uh, public judgment, and you you did conduct it very well at the beginning. And I think uh, if you can calm down and stay stay cool and collect it, and and you um, you you would not uh, lose a cool in this uh, final segment. It would be far better. Now, as you said many times today, we may not be have enough time to to put this to the vote. There are some pro establishment uh, members uh, who may um, call it a day. Uh, we may not uh, have time to vote, Chairman. Uh, given your wisdom, given uh, your um, intellectual uh, ability, maybe you're trying to sacrifice yourself in defence of the administration and the officials. Now, some said that uh, we are trying to compromise. I think we can even achieve a conciliation. It would take two to tango uh, for a compromise. It's not a one-sided uh, affair. It's not one-way street when it comes to a compromise. We were not just handing over the five billion dollars and and not ask questions. Now, for the ten percent, is it um, one percent or nine point nine percent? And no answer has been forthcoming. That we're not. Feel mustering. It's just that the, the administration is not fully prepared. The secretary uh, and other people, the poor establishment members. Now, in fact, the poor establishment members have been very quiet today, and they're not accusing us of feel mustering because they know full well that we are not doing anything remotely that. It's just that the officials um, are trying to um, cover up. Um, their inability. They are learning from uh, C. Y. Long. If um, there are problems, um, they they would just uh, blame um, Philip, uh, blame it on the Philip Bustring. 
Why do you have to force it upon us? Why do you have to ram it down our throat? Chairman, stay cool, uh, stay calm and collected. We don't have very much time left. Mr. Ted Hui, three minutes. Chairman, now you said you have been exercising for parents. I hope that this is true. I must um, criticize you here, Chairman. When it comes to uh, controversial items, uh, you will limit members' speaking time. Last time we dealt with um, the pay rise for the senior officials. Uh, this time, um, when it comes to distant land, you are dictating that uh, people should come down here and speak and and um, not get in the way. Is this uh, power conferred upon you by the court? No, this is not something conferred upon you by the court. I, I must criticize you uh, for exceeding your authority, Mr. Chairman. Let me come back to the subject. I've got many um, specific questions. Uh, let me put this to the uh, Disneyland. Now, for these uh, $5.45 billion, now this is taxpayers' money. If they fail to get this amount of money, if this uh, proposal is folded down, for instance, do you have any plan B um, to not um, get on with um, the, the uh, redevelopment or expansion? Do you have any plan um, to deal with um, the situation? Secretary? Not Secretary Chairman, uh, Managing Director. Yes, Managing Director, please. Um, you know, our plans are we make annual plans based on the, the available budget that we have. So it's using the existing facilities that we have. So, um, you know, that's, that's how we plan our, our, our service, and, um, and every year we do that. Well, if you don't get the money, will you stop the expansion? Managing director. I don't know of any plans myself. Again, these the the expansion. These are dialogues between the two shareholders. My job is to manage the day-to-day -day operations, the existing operations here in Hong Kong. It means that you don't have any plan. Uh, either you have the money or you fold. All right, doesn't matter. Let me put this to the secretary. There are many members uh, who talked about the spirit of the uh, agreement. Uh, we have already committed ourselves. Uh, we have to get on with it, otherwise we will be breaching the contract. Now, in this agreement between the government and the Disneyland, does it say that um, the government has to make um, further injection? Do we have the contractual obligation or the legal obligation to make the injection? Secretary? As far as I understand, there is nothing in the contract that um, the government has uh, to, to make the equity injection. We're looking at the development needs um, when we put forward this proposal. So it doesn't have to be there. So I, I, I'd like to clarify what the poor establishment member said. Mr. Wu Chiwai. Chairman, now, now we have already um, made a commitment that this land has to be has made a commitment, and there are only a number of ways to deal with it. Um, get the funding, and that, and also um, they get um, the funding on, on certain conditions. Now, if I may put this to the secretary, have you instructed um, Disneyland? as to how they improve the viability of the business in order to um, cut down on the losses? Or is it the case that um, for the day-to-day -day operation, you leave it entirely to the digital land management and you're just reading the report on an annual basis? Secretary, there are two issues. So the first issue is um, the Board of um, Governors. Um, we have uh, representatives on the board. I'm also uh, sitting on the board. We would um, monitor the um, cost effectiveness uh, and also the performance of the management. Second, my colleagues uh, do have a regular um, exchanges uh, with um, Disneyland to monitor their performance. Mr. Wu, before you discuss this equity injection, did the board 
discuss uh, the baseline case, uh, like uh, Mr. Ronick Chen said, there, there has to be there. Now, in this um, situation, you must have uh, considered this. Now, there were a couple of years uh, when the tourist number uh, was um, pretty high and the dividends um, were injected uh, into um, the, the theme park uh, for improvement. So we do have uh, injection on a regular basis. So did you ever ask the management of um, Disneyland to come up with a baseline for, for study? Secretary, at the board uh, meetings, the Disneyland uh, would submit um, the operational uh, reports. What about baseline projection? When you talk about baseline case and the the attendance and the tourist numbers and so on, we do uh, keep an eye on this. Like in 2009, in the capital realignment, uh, we did come before LetGo and made available some information. What about this um, injection proposal? Have you conducted any baseline analysis? I'm sure that um, the managing director has uh, responded to this. Well, my question is, did you ask the, the uh, Disneyland to uh, conduct a baseline analysis? Yes, as I said, uh, on a regular basis, we do have these reports. All right, time is up. Uh, Mr. Andrew Wen, Chairman. In today's meeting, uh, Chairman, you said uh, many bad precedents, and, and you uttered some uh, inappropriate uh, remarks. I think I have to uh, address this on behalf of uh, the members. As experienced members, you must be aware, Chairman, that uh, there are many factors um, when members choose to speak. Like Mr. Claudia Mo said, some members would prefer to listen to other members first before speaking themselves. And some members uh, may, may um, strategically choose um, to speak at a certain time. There are some members from the pro establishment members that would be speaking last. Uh, by your standard, um, they will never ever get the time get to speak. Now you are trying to uh, cite um, the court verdict as a backup, but it doesn't mean to say that um, you can you can um, use authority upon us uh, like this any time. Now. Uh, from all you, what you said, um, you you can choose um, to to uh, end uh, any time you like. Uh, there are members like uh, Mr. James T, uh, James Toe, uh, who said that there were members who haven't quite spoken. Why to limit their their opportunities? I think uh, you have committed an error of judgment. I'm sure you know uh, what happened. Maybe it was just um, a negligence on your part. There is a mechanism whereby members who haven't spoken. I will enjoy a priority. You, you, you know that, Chairman, don't you? What is this mechanism there for? It is intended to make sure that members will have um, 15 minutes to, to speak. Uh, by your standard, uh, we, we can dismantle the entire mechanism altogether. The mechanism would be ridiculous. So, Chairman, what you said uh, seems to be far-fetched. I'm not sure whether you are sacrificing yourself uh, in order to achieve um, uh, the common good. Chairman, I, I, I'm trying to be uh, calm and collected. I, I hope that um, you would not um, lose um, your cool in this uh, last session. If I may put this to the, to the uh, Secretary, now there is a, a question that remains unanswered, or you gave um, a, a really woolly answer. Now, some asked, um, Mr. Holden Chow mentioned the information. You said that you haven't made available any confidential information. My question is, have you uh, WhatsApped uh, members? Have you verbally given any information on a confidential basis? Uh, no. Well, this is a very serious question. In other words, the secretary is saying that Mr. Holden Chow was lying. Is that a correct understanding? I think uh, members from the DAB should clarify this point. I was commending Mr. Chow uh, for his uh, achievement. And I think uh, with the Secretary's clarification, the Bureau is saying that is actually saying that the DAB is lying. Dr. Yeo. Uh, of course, I'd like to reiterate this again. In your paper, you have not clearly disclosed the risk for the present investment. I think if members will remember, 
when Link read Link was uh, applying for the listing of the read, uh, the risks were not fully disclosed in the paper. Eventually, the proposal had to be withdrawn, and they have to reapply for listing again. Actually, the relationship between the risk and the return, even if you have not studied any course on investment, you would have heard of uh, you know general uh, you know a master William Sharp in 1964 capital asset theory of market equilibrium. Uh, General Finance, 19 bracket 3. It is clear that all the uh, practitioners of investment analysis, they would always disclose the, the return and the risks. So my question with Secretary is whether you can tell this council uh, this, that is, Regarding your proposal for the expansion of Phase One of the Disney theme park, what has been your your your, your assessment of the risk for this uh, proposal? Regarding the expansion plan, we've considered two scenarios, and members are well aware of that. Scenario A is more prudent than Scenario B, and we actually conducted a risk analysis uh, for scenario A and and reduce the additional visitor numbers by 15 percent. The outcome was that uh, during a 20 and 40 year operational period, the overall economic efficiency would be 36 and 14 billion and that we would be a a able to break even by 2040 and it will uh, create 4,000 to 6,000 jobs. Well, I think I have. I think you can download William Sharp's, uh, uh, you know, uh, paper. It said you must benchmark the risk with other alternative investment opportunities. Can you tell me for this investment? Compare with the risk for investment in bonds and equities or stocks. How would it is it is the risk lower or higher? Or you can give me the probability distribution return. It's not for you to set those determine those risks. You have to benchmark that against the the risk of other investments. Time is up. I like to reiterate again that although the court has made a ruling, I have not really exhausted all the powers that I can exercise, and I've already explained to to, to members. So the time is up for this session. Our next meeting is scheduled for the 28th. Thank you very much.